Okay, so in this video we're going to be talking about how to write equations for constant velocity. And let's just get it right out there. Yes, you could just memorize some equations. You could memorize that x equals vt plus xo. You would have to remember that that only works for constant velocity, and you'd have to remember what these things were. In my experience, that will get you through physics, maybe you'll survive it, um, but it won't allow you to thrive. The other equation you'd get is V equals delta X over delta T. And it might feel like memorizing those makes a lot of sense right now, but the truth is every single unit we're going to get at least one more equation, probably more than that, and it would be much better for you to realize that all of our equations are coming from graphs that we got during the lab. And so what I'm gonna dedicate this video to is making sure that you understand how to create equations because that's really what physics is about. It's not about memorizing an equation and using it. It's not a math class. It's actually a class that goes beyond math, a class where you are expected to create math. And that's what physicists do every day. And it's the skill that I want to help you guys develop. So this whole process in a position versus, or um, in a constant velocity situation starts with a position versus time graph. And so when we did our lab, we started with these kind of graphs. We had position on the y-axis, um, we had time on the x-axis, and let's say for your little yellow car, it started um, at a position of two meters um, to the left of the origin that was marked on your table. Um, one second later, it was maybe at the origin, a position of zero meters. One second later, it was um, two meters to the right of the origin, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this would be the line that you had on your position versus time graph. Now, the question is, how do we translate that graph into an equation? Well, let's just talk about it mathematically first. If you were in math class, you would remember that whenever you're looking at a straight line, you're going to utilize the equation y equals mx plus b. And the idea of this equation is this works for all lines but you need to make it specific to the line we're talking about here. And so you need to figure out specifically what the slope is and what the y-intercept are and plug those in and then you'll be able to find any y value for any x value and vice versa. So we start with m. We want to find the slope. We find slope by solving for the rise over the run which is my favorite way to remember it, which basically means the change in the y value over the change in the x value, okay? And the y-intercept is simply going to be this value over here. It's what is the y value when the x value is zero. So in this case, so that's generally what we get from math class. We learn these equations, y equals mx plus b. We learn that slope is change in y over change in x. And we learn that the y-intercept is what is y when x is 0. So physics is using those tools from math class and applying them to the specific situation you're looking at. So if we want to apply these tools to create an equation for how our yellow car moves, we need to replace these things, these different variables, with variables that represent our situation. All right, so this graph that we're looking at for our actual experiment um, was one of position of the yellow cart versus time. So any time, instead of using y, in our equations, we want to say that y is actually the position of the car. So anytime we talk about y, we're talking about position. Anytime we talk about x, we're actually talking about time. So we want to replace the x 
with time. And our goal is going to be to create an equation that lets us figure out the position of the car at any time or the time it takes the car to reach any position. And we're going to use these other ideas to help us with that. So the slope of this line is still going to be the rise over the run. It's still change in the y variable over the change in the x variable. For this specific situation, the slope is the change in position over the change in time. So I've actually created an equation for this situation. This would be acceptable on a question um, just by changing the variables to match what we see on there. Okay. So one important thing to realize is if we actually do this calculation, we'll notice that we went from um, a position of 0 to a position of 2. So that's a change in position. Sorry, that should be um, change in position is delta x of 2 meters. And that took 1 second. So that was a change in time of 1 second. So if you were to plug those in, we find that this is going to be 2 divided by 1, which is just 2. The unit is the unit of position, meters, divided by seconds. So we see that the slope of this line is 2 meters per second. Now, that should give you a hint that what the slope means is the velocity of the object. So if we go ahead and change that too, we can say we can create an equation that says that velocity, which is the slope, equals the change in position over the change in time. Now we already used that, we already know that that equals 2 meters per second, but this would count as an equation that we can write for this. Later on in the year, this is going to be important because if you know what the slope means, you can replace slope with that variable, and if you know what the y and the x variables are, you can replace those and create an equation for that specific situation or relationship very easily. All right, so that's our first equation. All right, the second thing we want to be able to do is we want to be able to figure out what the y-intercept is. And so we said that the y-intercept is um, the y-value when x is 0. So in this case, we want to place y and say that the, is the position x when the time is is zero. So it's position at time zero, which means the starting point in this case. We always need to be able to stop and think about what does the y-intercept mean. Okay, so it's what is x when time is zero. So in this case, the object starts at negative two meters of position, and so we would plug negative two in over here. All right. So now that we know that the velocity we solved for that was 2 meters per second, and we know that the y-intercept b equals negative 2 meters, we can go ahead and plug those values into this equation, and it becomes x equals 2 meters per second from the velocity times t. For some reason, students always forget to write this variable. Um, a lot of times, students will write x equals 2, they'll plug in the slope, plus, or sorry, um, minus 2, because they'll plug in the y-intercept, and that'll be it. They forget to write the t right there, um, and so that isn't true, because x is not always equal to 0. Um, it's an equation. So you want to make sure that you write the t, and then you say minus 2 for the y-intercept. And this becomes your second equation for this situation. Now usually what I'm asking you for, usually what the question will say, is the question will ask you for the relationship between position and time. This equation right here shows the relationship between position and time. I know it shows that relationship because the only variables in the equation are a variable for position and a variable for time. If you're asked to find a relationship for two things, you want to leave those things in the equation as variables and have everything else be plugged in as a number. So this would be a perfect answer to most of your questions about
equations. All right. Let's say we've got a slightly different situation. Um, here's an object that starts at a position of four meters. And one second later, it's at a position of two meters. One second later, it's at a position of zero meters. And one second later, it's at a position of negative two meters. So your line, draw that point, so your line looks like this, okay? Um, I want you to try to figure out what are you gonna plug in? So stop the video and try to create a, a equation that shows the relationship between position and time for this object. All right, so I hope you actually stopped it and you tried that. Um, the biggest thing to notice is that the ch when we calculate the velocity, in other words, when we're calculating the slope, we're going to be looking at the change in position over the change in time, right? That's the first thing we need to do. So the change in position here would be you lose from 4 down to 2. You lose 2 meters. So that's negative 2 meters in 1 second. Sorry, I didn't mean to make the slope the same, but it's a slightly different, and so it's going to be negative 2 meters per second when you plug that in. That's important. And also, you need to realize your y-intercept over here is going to be 4 meters. So the answer to this question that you'd want to write down is x equals negative 2t plus 4. And this is an acceptable answer, like I said, because it shows the relationship between position and time, you're only allowed to have the position variable and the time variable. All right. Sometimes students just grab the equation right off the wall and they write this. x equals vt plus xo. That doesn't work because it has extra variables other than just position and time. I hope that this will help you to understand how we're using our math skills to create equations for each situation, um, which is an extremely valuable skill in physics that we will use throughout the rest of the year.